We don't wanna be enemies, I go man with me, I go wings You gon' step on my ship, you gon' you gon' mess with the king Welcome to more Fanime What's up everybody? Today we're gonna take a deep dive into one of the most popular characters in all of One Piece. Yes! Trafalgar D. Waterlaw! That guy with the longest name in history. One of the most confusing names when I first started reading One Piece, but also one of the best characters in the entire series. Easily the most popular babyface and or good guy other than the actual straw hats, I would have to say. I mean, really, could you name one? Maybe Ace, but he isn't around anymore. Before I get into spoiler territory, uh, and I will be spoiling stuff if you aren't caught up with the series, I would like to ask you to comment down below, let me know your thoughts on Trafalgar Law. This guy is epic. This guy has one of the best abilities within the series, uh, Devil Fruit abilities, that is. This guy, um, he rules. Probably my favorite doctor character in all of anime, hands down. He is the surgeon of death. I mean, this dude really made more of an impact than I think that even Oda expected. From what I've read in interviews with uh, our boy Achira Oda, he said that his original plan was really to push Eustace Kidd as a, a main um, side character, not Law, but the popularity polls show just how important Law is going to be going forward. I think Law was always meant to do something important, but this, this guy, he transcends the manga itself. There are probably people who like Law more than any member of the Straw Hat crew. They probably want him to join the Straw Hat crew if his crew, if, um, you know, the Law Heart Pirates ever meet an unfortunate fate, which they possibly could at any moment because they're currently in the battle of their lives, the biggest fight Law's ever had against the Blackbeard Pirates, against Marshall D. Teach. We don't know the fate of Law or his crew yet. But I thought, why not take the time before that happens, before something bad could happen, and let's talk about Law. Let's talk about his possible futures. Um, let's get back to the beginning, though. This guy made his debut at Saba Odi. Um, you know, Trafalgar. I mean, I think me and my wife thought it was Trafalgar the first time I read it, uh, and we saw him in the anime. I was like, Trafalgar? And then I found out it was Trafalgar. And then same with Saba Odi, another one that's hard to say. Not even sure if I'm saying it right, but Law makes his appearance looking badass, wearing a hoodie, wearing his jeans, just killing it left and right. He shows up at the auction hall, not sure what his plan was. My guess is he was going to free some slaves because that seems to be his M.O. Yeah, he likes to help people who have been wronged by society, especially the, the weaker ones that can't defend themselves. If you look at his crew, he's full of people who probably shouldn't have made it to the Grand Line based on their abilities alone. But now he's gathered this group of misfits and became has created his own little bit of a family there. And you got to respect that. And up until the current manga uh, chapters where we found out his crew actually can defend themselves, themselves. They work together using teamwork rather than raw power, which is impressive as, uh, you know, just that. I love the fact that Oda includes things like teamwork as a ability because there are a lot of mangaka that are just like, well, if they're not strong, they're not important and I'm not going to waste any screen time on them. No! gonna see at least the top diggity dogs of Law's crew cause some damage. Real damage. We get to see Law at the auction hall for the first time with a giant polar bear man. And at the time, I'm like, what is up with this polar bear? Even Luffy's like, okay, what's up with the polar bear? And at the time when I was reading, I was like, yeah, what's up with the polar bear? Turns out he's a mink that got washed up, I believe, in the North Blue, where Law is from, along with Sanji. You know, we find out that Law, you know, grew up reading uh, Germa 66 mangas. You know, he's a big of a... He 
uh, Law is a bit of a weeb, if you think about it, since he's such a big fan of the comic book skis. Uh, but he's, he's such a cool character. He's, he's a cool cucumber. He's chilling there with his sideburns, just, just waiting to see what's going to happen here at this auction. You know, Luffy comes in and causes absolute havoc, and Law's like, I like this kid. And, and then, you know, used his kid as kind of a tag along. He's got the highest bounty of the three. These are the three best friends that anybody could have. And they go out and they just cause absolute damage to the current members of the Marines who are there at the auction house surrounding them, destroying these people one by one. Law starts to, like, take people's heads off, cutting, the, cutting them in half. Crazy shit. You're like, why are they not dead? He took the... It's crazy. He can trade things like put bombs where people's heads are and shit like that. Those are some cool abilities. He can teleport within a distance, which I've always been a fan of people who can use the teleport ability. I've said this a million times. What superpower could you have if you could have one? It would be teleportation because you could use that in a regular life scenario. Imagine how many vacations you could go on at such a cheap price if you don't got to pay for airfare. Uh, as long as you know how to teleport correctly. And you can teleport across the whole world. If it's, if it's a limited amount of teleportation like Laws, who's hasn't, he's increased that range. Uh, using his room ability, which summons this giant orb of sorts where he can control uh, what's going on in it. He can teleport in it. He can cut people up without actually hurting them. I think he's pretty dope. Uh, you know, we didn't get to see a lot of him pre-time skip, but we got to learn just enough where we were intrigued. A kid, uh, on the other hand, it was obvious he had the Magneto ability. He could control metal. It was obvious that's what his deal was. He's a bit of a psycho. He's Maybe that's the reason Kid didn't get the popularity boost that Law did. He had less mystery around him, whereas Law was like, what's up with this guy? He's a handsome fellow, and he's got a really cool ability that I'd like to know more about. So Law gets to be the first, I believe, member of the worst generation outside of the Straw Hat crew to make an impact after the time skip. Yeah! He shows up working for Caesar at Punk Hazard right after Fishman Island. He's standing there at the factory, and we're going, whoa! He beats the shiz at a smoker smoker a character at the time we thought was going to make a big uh make a big splash in the future of the series but it does seem that smoker's always going to be just that step behind the straw hat crew and anybody else he's kind of a laughing stock he's kind of become the James, you know, him and Tashiga are like Jesse and James from Team Rocket at this point. And that's kind of sad because I didn't expect that to, you know, f that to be their destiny. We'll see. The story's not over yet. But, you know, Law gets his, uh, you know, he gets a win against Smoker. A guy that, again, we thought was going to be special. <sighs> Sorry, Smoker fans. I like Smoker, but ugh, he just was an introduction into Logia Devil Fruits. And other than that nothing else. He helped the Straw Hat crew a couple times, but really begrudgingly and only because he had no other choice. Ugh. But Law, he had a plan. He had a plan from the start. When he found out Luffy was at Punk Hazard, he's going, yes, I like this kid. Hey, Luffy, let's form an alliance. And that shook the world. They formed the ultimate alliance. Like, we're going to work together. And we are going to take down an emperor. We're going to take down Kaido. And along the way, we're going to take down Doflamingo. Yes! Law, in a way, became a quasi-member of the Straw Hat crew in a weird way, shape, or form. He was uh, tagging along. I mean, at the same time, I was just like, what is happening? Where is his crew? Where's the polar bear? Where's the rest of them? You're just going to have them go off and do their own thing? And I think they went straight to, to Zoe instead of being anywhere near the battle with Doflamingo. My only guess is Law knows how sadistic Doflamingo could be. And he's just like, I don't want to risk any of the people I love's lives ever again uh, to Doflamingo. I'll gather the Straw Hat crew instead. <laughs>
and I'll use them. If they die, I won't care as much. It's kind of where I got the vibe I got from Law. Law's a little bit, you know, he, he cares about the people he cares about. But other than that, you're disposable. I mean, Law became a Seven Warlord of the Sea, a member of the Seven Warlords of the Sea. When we found that out, I was like, what is happening? Because I love the Seven Warlords of the Sea. What has happened over this two-year time skip? Law is a member. We all like him. They're bad guys. No, no, no. He actually turned in like a bunch of hearts of wanted pirates? Or was it a bunch of hearts of marines? I can't remember. I believe it was pirate hearts that they took. Yes, I believe he traded 100 or 200 pirate hearts or some crazy amount of hearts. Because, by the way, he can take your heart heart out of your body and put it into somebody else's body and then you are now within that body. That's another ability that Law has that we find out at Punk Hazard that he doesn't use enough. But he flipped some personalities around. He's flipped Toshigi and Smoker's personality around, which was quite fun. We got to see uh, Chopper and Frankie switch it up. Sanji and Nami were switching it up. Nami was actually in Frankie's body. Sanji was in Nami's body. Ah! Things were going crazy. That stuff was funny. It was a good gag. It didn't, I mean, it kind of overstayed its welcome, but we got right past it. We got right past it. We did. They defeat everybody at Punk Hazard, including some members of uh, Doflamingo's crew. Law himself took on arguably the strongest member of Doflamingo's crew, other than himself, Virgo. Virgo, a character that I believe still has something left to do in this series. I think he survived the explosion that happened at Punk Hazard, thanks to Law. Um, I think he survived that. I think he survived the death that uh, we all thought it happened. You know, he was all cut up by Law, but he had the sh one of the strongest armament hockey abilities. He could form his whole body with arm and hockey. Yeah. So I think that he's fine. I think he survived the explosion, found a way to put himself back together, or maybe some Marines found him, put him back together. He was never turned in as a, as a spy, uh, a pirate spy. No, he was not because uh, Smoker didn't want to turn him in. He assumed he was dead ski. And that was another cool thing. We got to see Smoker and Law team up after fighting each other. Cool. I love team ups in One Piece. I really do. And Law's a great teammate. He teams up with Smoker here, gets the win against Virgo, a tough SOB. Then later he goes to Dressarosa and they have this very fun story, one of the longest stories in the series, uh, picking off members of Doflamingo's crew and trying to get Ace's fire fruit. I know Law had nothing to do with that, but Law was trying to take Dofi down. And at the same time, he was trying to use the Straw Hat crew to their best of abilities. And he had to figure out how Luffy acts as a captain. It was a whole ordeal. But by the end of that arc, we got to see another major team up. Law and Luffy versus Doflamingo. Very fun. Law is a good backup partner and we get to see it again in Wano when he teams up with Eustace Kid and takes down Big Mom, a fucking emperor. Law ain't no joke and I don't think that Kid could have won that battle without Law and I don't think that Luffy could have beaten Doflamingo without Law and I don't think that Smoker could have beaten Virgo without Law. There is always a nucleus to these tag teams and Law is that nucleus. He's the guy that sinks that victory in. His ability is so hard to counter because you don't know what it can do sometimes. If you're not studying this character, you don't know everything it can do. I don't think we know everything it can do. We do know that he can give somebody eternal life with the ability he has, with the opi opi no me, with the ability to just chop people up, to surgically change people's anatomy, change people's personalities, all these crazy abilities that no other devil fruit has. It's probably the top diggity paramecia out there. Maybe right there next to Whitebeard's devil fruit, which is now Blackbeard's devil fruit, which he's fighting now. So he's going toe to toe with the other top paramecia, which is just nuts to me. But Laws, I would say, is even more unique. Being able to give somebody eternal life by sacrificing your own, that, that's a, that's a, you know, uh, what do they call it? That, the, that's a thing that's going to happen. 
Whether he gives it to Luffy or he's forced to give it to a villain, it's gonna happen. It's gonna come into play at some point. A lot of us think that maybe he's gonna do it to Blackbeard to save his crew. Very possible. And then maybe Blackbeard will take that devil fruit if he can. We still aren't sure about that ability. But Law's backstory, easily, my second favorite backstory in the entire series. Very sad, very emotional. Uh, I would say the only one that tops it for me is Nico Robbins, but I'm biased because I love Nico Robbins. She's fucking fantastic. But Laws was very close and it had a connection with Doflamingo and Doflamingo's brother, Corazon. Yes, Corazon. That was so sad when he died. It was so sad when Corazon sacrificed himself to keep Lost safe using his silent ability, uh, keeping him in that little treasure box behind him, getting him away so Law could eventually travel the, was it the South Blue or North Blue, where he just, I think it was a North Blue, because that's where I believe he was from. And he just started, you know, building his crew one year to Time. I never read the Law backstory book, which I, I know exists, but I, I, I know he, he, you know, he met people like Penguin and Sachi and Beppo. Beppo, his right hand mink. Beppo made such a major appearance in Film Red. Law has made an appearance in Film Red and Stampede. Major appearances just being there, being a badass. Law is just such a cool character. He really is. He could have his own anime. He could have his own manga. He's not your titular rival. He's not like a Vegeta in any way, shape, or form. Eustace Kid is a closer version to Vegeta than Law is. Law's more of a Piccolo type. He's more of a strategery type. He's a strategist, kind of like uh, Shikamaru, but not to that extent. He thinks before he leaps, unlike Luffy. Maybe that's why they, they're, you know, opposites attract. They are kind of the polar opposites as captains. They, they, they fight differently and they plan differently. Whereas Law plans for a battle, Luffy runs head first. And we learn that quickly. And in a way, a lot of people would be like, man, I wish, I don't believe this, but I could see people going, I wish Law was the main character because he's just that cool. And I think what makes him so cool is that you don't get to see a lot of him in the early series. And then you get to see a shit ton of him up until Kaido is defeated. And then he goes off and does his own thing. And then he's right back in the story because the editor cannot allow Oda to keep him out of the story because he's that popular. And the fact that he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe right now with Blackbeard means so much. I mean, can you imagine if Luffy went that direction and right now he was fighting Blackbeard? It'd be the biggest thing in the world! And that little taste we got of that battle was so exciting. Easily probably the top four chapters of Egghead Island. Uh, one of my favorite thing that's things that's going on right now in the story is Law versus Blackbeard. I hope we get to see more of that fight in the manga or especially in the anime. Just give me all of it. I want to see his, uh, his, his crew. I want to see Sachi and Penguin and Beppo and uh, what was the other guy's name? The guy he saved from Saba Odi. I can't remember his name. Jim Bart, I believe. Bart. Um, Bart, I want to see that dude kick some ace. I want to see Bart. He's a shield. He blocks some sniper bullets from Von Auger. That's impressive. That's impressive shiz. And, and I could see Law beating Blackbeard, but you know it's not going to happen because Blackbeard's our titular main antagonist that needs to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Luffy. Luffy and Blackbeard have only touched like one time. And that was it. Impelled down. And it was like one hit. That was it. That was all of it. That was every, that was everything. Huh. Isn't that crazy? I don't even. Uh, did they touch? I think Luffy punched him. That's crazy. And now Law is in a death match with the dude. Law is not our main character, but he is damn close in popularity. Law, uh, I think he still has a lot to do in the story. We still don't know what water means in his name. There's still so much mystery wrapped around him. Kid, his partner, his Law's tag team partner against Big Mom, he might be done. There was a recent chapter where he got one-shotted by Shanks, which is understandable because Shanks is that OP. Shanks and Garp are probably the top strongest characters in the series right now. So it's understandable that he lost that quickly. Blackbeard isn't that kind. Of, he's not a powerhouse. He's strong. 
but he's not Shanks uh, that we've seen so far. We haven't seen Blackbeard pull that kind of skills out. He kind of, he's situational. Blackbeard's a strategist as well, so that's why this fight with Law is so cool. We get to see two uh, 3D chess players go and move for move here, and, and that's the kind of stuff I like to see. We get to see a crew put together by hate and a crew put together by love going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And I love that. I really do. Uh, but I think Kid could be done, whereas I think that Law still has a major story to tell. He's got to do that surgery, that eternal life surgery still. I mean, he still has it in the back pocket. I helped Big Big Mom. I helped be beat Vergo and Do, Do Flamingo. I, I am a big deal. I am law. I was a seven warlord of the sea. I am this close to being an emperor. And by the end of the series, law could end up being one of the four emperors if they decide to keep that system around. Uh, we're not sure how the story is going to end. I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. But I do know law is going going to be a big part of that ending. There's a really good chance, 90% chance, that Law will die before the end of the series. Uh, either he dies making the sacrifice, giving somebody eternal life, bringing somebody back from the brink of death, and then he dies that way because he's got to sacrifice himself for that. Or he dies defending somebody important like his crewmates or somebody like Luffy who has to make become king of the pirates. He has to at this point. We've been waiting all this time. I don't think Law is going to become king of the pirates. I'm going to say that right now. Prediction made. Law will not become king of the pirates. And I don't think that's really one of his main goal skis. No, he wants to find out the Void Century. He kind of already fulfilled his major goal, avenging Coruscant and taking down Kaido. And Big Mom was a bonus for Law, which is really cool. Law is on top of the world. He has done more than Kid. He didn't have to murder people to get where he is. I'm sure he's killed a few people that have gotten in his way. Let's be honest. Most of these pirates have. I'm sure Luffy's accidentally killed some people with his little gum gum fist flying around. Law is no exception. But, you know, Kid ran around absolutely mass murdering people to get his high bounty. Whereas Law, he had a much lower bounty than Kid and Luffy because he was being a little secretive. I would say, because he didn't want Doflamingo to know where he was. That's why I think his bounty was lower than Luffy's at the time. I personally think Law might have been more skilled than Luffy at Saba Odi. If Law and Luffy pre-time skip fought at Saba Odi, one-on-one, -on -one, I think Law would win. I don't think Luffy could counter those abilities. He wouldn't know what the fudge is happening. I think that it would be close, for sure. I think Law would have just used some trickery and strategy to take this dude down. But if it was the Straw Hat crew versus the Law pi Heart Pirates, then yeah, the Straw Hat crew would win. That's the best part about Luffy's crew. Everybody has a purpose. Law... I don't think he had, would have the ability to take on Sanji and Zoro at the same time. That's what I'm saying. But I think one-on-one -on -one against Luffy, oh yeah. He would probably just cut his head off and put it over here. Luffy would think that's so cool. He's like, look, I can hold my head in my hands. This is crazy. Um, I love Law. I do. Uh, is there anything we forgot to talk about? Oh, the future for Law. Again, he might sacrifice himself, you know, using the eternal life surgery. He probably 99% chance will not become King of the Pirates. I think my future prediction for Law is he is going to die. Yeah, it's going to be sad. I don't think he's going to die in this fight with Blackbeard right now. I think he's got more to do alive uh, on screen, especially if Oda isn't going to show the entire fight. I would be kind of disappointed in Oda. If you're going to kill a treasured character like Law, you, you show us the whole fight. Or at least give us a flashback of that death, because whoa. You think Kid getting taken down by Shanks in one hit uh, shocked the world? No. Law dying from Blackbeard in an off-screen battle would shock the world in both One Piece and this world we live in now. It ain't happening. He's too popular. Popular. He sells all the toys. I, I mean, I don't think that Oda's always taken the route of, I want to sell more toys, except with Chopper. You know, Chopper's the big mascot of the crew now, and he's kind of lost in the shuffle of cuteness. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen to Law, though. Maybe Beppo. 
Uh, I don't think Beppo's gonna. That'd be sad. Fuck if Beppo got killed by Blackbeard, and last next time we see Law, he's showing up on the the ship of the Sunny, all beat up, and he's like, "They killed my entire crew, and I'm all that's left." That would throw me off, and that would be the only way I could ever see Law bending the knee to the Straw Hat crew and asking to join so he can get some revenge, because they would be the best allies he could probably find them or or Shanks. But we don't know all the, the details about Shanks yet. But Law is still a teeny bit of a mystery. You know, Law is a character I could see shipping. I'm not a big shipper, but I could see him and uh, Nico Robin ending up together at the end of the series if Law was able to make it out. That's the happy ending. That's the happy ending I give Law. But I don't think he was meant for that. He was always meant to, to live a short but amazing life. And I think he's accomplished 90% of his goals. He's got one more. He just wants to see what the one piece is. Let him see it. And then let him make that sacrifice. This is more Fanime. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on Trafalgar D. Law. Any theories I might have missed or forgot to talk about. Don't forget to like, share. I'll talk to you later.